Well, greetings, printing enthusiasts. My name is Vicki Soma. This is Teagall 3D. Today's episode, we are going to talk about the 3D printed derby that's going to happen at the East Coast Rip Rap Festival on June 23rd in Bel Air, Maryland. The 3D printed derby has the word derby in the title, but it's not a demolition derby. Uh, what this is, is it's paying homage to the famous Pinewood Derby that the Cub Scouts do. Um, they've been doing this since 1953. Uh, each boy will get a little block of wood that they um, cut up and they decorate and they put on these uh, standard wheels with nails and they run races on a standardized track um, to see whose car is the fastest. That is exactly what we are doing, except the main body of the car is going to be not out of Pinewood, but 3D printed. When you go to the East Coast Rip Rap Festival site and you click on 3D Printed Derby, the first thing you may notice is there's a lot of rules. A lot of these are um, just making sure that your car is going to actually fit and run on the track. Uh, so when you start designing the main body of your car, uh, there's a couple things that you want to want to keep in mind. Um, first off, the entire the the length of the car. Uh, your car needs to fit in the starting block and sit on the starting pen, so it can't be too long for that area. Um, so your, the total length of the car has to be 177.8 millimeters, that's 7 inches or less. Uh, the other thing is your car actually has to fit in the lanes of, of the track, so it can actually go down the track. If it can't fit, it's not going to be successful racing in that little lane. And so for the width, you're going to want to make sure the entire width, and this is including your, your wheels, you want to make sure the entire width is 69.85 millimeters, which is 2 and 3 quarters inches. In these lanes, there's a center rail that your wheels have to have to go around so that they, you know, they, they can't, if your wheels are too close, they're not going to clear that center rail. So you need to make sure your uh, left wheels and your right wheels are at least 44.5 millimeters apart so you have enough room for that center rail. And in the same vein, you need to make sure the bottom of your car is going to be 9.5 millimeters off of the, the bottom of the track. When your cars are lined up to get ready to race, there is a little starting pen that is going to be holding the car um, you know, to keep it still. It's at the top of a big slope and when the race begins that pen disappears. You need to make sure that your car stays secure on that pen and the way you need to do that is you can't have just a point on the front of your car. You need to have a half inch, uh, which would be 12.7 uh, millimeters, uh, to, so you have enough contact area on that starting pen. At the same point in time, that starting pen only comes up so high. So you need to make sure the, the uh, bottom most front part, part of your car uh, is no more than 25.4 millimeters or one inch over the bottom of the track and that's just to make sure that it's touching the starting pen and not hanging over it. And then another little design consideration you should keep in mind when you're working on your vehicles is uh, your front wheels and your back wheels they have to be four inches apart which is 101.6 millimeters. And of course one of the most famous rules of the Pinewood Derby and hopefully the 3D printed derby, is the weight of the cars. Uh, you need to keep your cars uh, five ounces or less. And, you know, ideally, the heavier the car, the more kinetic energy you're going to have and th that should translate to, to speed. So you want to try to keep your car as heavy as possible. So you want to aim for that five ounces as, as close as you can. Uh, you are allowed, just like in the Pinewood Derby, to add weights. Uh, Chris Pileski has an example car up on Thingiverse, and if you look at the bottom of it, you could see that he left areas in for weights. So not only is this event for adults and children, but your car could be simple or it could be complicated. And I have two sons, and um, they both are entering cars this year, and we have both cases. Uh, we have one son who decided to do a simple design. He just wanted something with his name on it and something that he could put his Peppa Pigs in. Um, and then I had a son who went, ran the gamut of like any kind of, uh, oh, I want, a, I want a Halo Jeep or I want this ship from Star Wars. Uh, but what he finally settled on is the ship, he wanted to do something based on the ship of the uh, series The Orville. 
Both of these cars were designed in Blender, and I'll just do a quick overview of how I modeled these for my sons. We're gonna start with the easy one. And um, if you look down the rules, one of the things they list is the block of wood, the dimensions of the block of wood that the, the Cub Scouts work with. That is a very easy way to start with your designs, you know, to make sure that you're hitting these measurements. So when I started this simple design for my youngest son, that's what I did. I opened up Blender, I started a cube, and I went to the properties and I filled in those dimensions. And then to shape it, did in Blender I used a tool called Loop Cut and Slide, and I made a series of cuts, um, and I can use Alt, uh, right click to select a whole edge loop at once and move it and I just started shaping them down just to get the simple front and back of the car. I went ahead and put some loops uh, where I was going to put the seats. Um, goodness, never ever ever did I ever think I would be taking uh, calipers to measure a Peppa Pig, but I did. <laughs> so I found out you know how much uh, Peppa Pig's uh, rear end is just to make sure that I had enough area for her to see, sit. Um, so I had those little loop cuts as well. And then it was just as simple as picking the, the selected faces and extruding them down. Um, also I went ahead and extruded up, uh, took advantage of bridging to make a little windshield and extruded up some seat backs for them as well. When you put these wheels on, you do have a nail. And um, I left holes in the model for these nails. Uh, for that, I used uh, a cylinder and its diameter was 2.405. And how did I come up with that number? Uh, I didn't even get my calipers out. I, I took my calipers out on the Peppa Pig, <laughs> but I didn't even bother with the nail. And the reason why is there's an example model on Thingiverse by Chris Pileski. So I actually downloaded that model and took a look and found that that was the size hole that he used. So my final step on the car was to make these giant cylinders with the radius of 2.405 millimeters and I subtracted it from the car just to leave holes. So then I get to my more high maintenance older son who wanted a Orville. This one was a little trickier. With it, I was still doing a lot of loop cuts, um, but what I ended up doing was I erased, you know, half of it. It's going to be symmetrical, so I erased half of it and put a mirror modifier into play. Then I added a subdivision surface modifier, and that's what gives it sort of its uh, smooth, curvier, uh, more organic feel. If you did a side-by-side -side comparison of this model of versus the Orville that you see in season one of the TV show, it, there would be differences. I did have to take liberties on the dimensions here. Just one example of one of those liberties is the top view of the ship. You would see that the, the front of the ship is pointy. And as we talked about earlier with the rules, I can't do that in this case because I need to have a good contact area with a starting pen. I need to have the front of this to be at least 12.7 millimeters. The, the trickiest rule, I think, for me with this Orville model was the front wheels and the back wheels being 101.6 uh, millimeters apart, four inches apart. Um, that was an aesthetic challenge, I think. And the way I worked this out was I brought in a cube into my Blender project and I, I made it to the dimensions of 101.6. So I had it four inches. I modeled some fake wheels that I'm not gonna print and I placed them based on that cube. Then I used those wheels to move around my model and try to find a place where they would look good and actually spin. And once I was satisfied with where, where the wheels were, I, I went ahead and made these little support structures. I extruded them out um, just to, to bring them down. The Peppa Pig model, it turned out I actually had to pull down infill to make sure it wouldn't go overweight. Uh, with this model, it was going to be underweight. And so what I ended up doing was just doing a simple little hole in here uh, so I could fill it with pennies um, when we get to, to game day to make sure I get it as close as the five ounces as possible. One thing that was interesting to me is I still use Simplify 3D as my slicer and in it they have a filament weight or plastic weight uh, setting and that is actually pretty on the money. I, my expectation was it was going to be as about as accurate as their printing time estimates so I wasn't even giving any credence at all. Um, but when I first printed the Peppa Pig it was just like something like 
one gram away um, weight wise what it estimated and what I actually weighed it so when you are starting your prints you can pretty much you I think simplify 3d is pretty reliable well thank you guys for watching I do hope I'll see some of you at the East Coast Rip Rap Festival on June 23rd and 24th at Bel Air Maryland if you do design a derby car and you run into any questions please feel free to reach out to me. You could comment down here in YouTube. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at TGAW. And you can also send any queries or questions to at Earth 2018 on Twitter as well. And you can find um, uh, Earth on Facebook and Instagram too.